Rick Rubin is listed as the producer of Slipknot's 2004 breakthrough album, Volume 3, The Subliminal Verses. But if you were to ask the members of Slipknot, more specifically frontman Corey Taylor, he doesn't have fond memories of making the album, often criticizing Rick Rubin in the press. Today, let's explore what happened. Slipknot's 2004 album, Volume 3, The Subliminal Verses, would help raise the band's profile, earning a Grammy, while also featuring some of the band's best-known tracks, including Before I Forget and Duality. A lot of people probably believe that because Rick Rubin was attached to the project, and given his long track record of successful albums, he was instrumental to the success of the record. But that wasn't the case, at least according to Corey Taylor. According to the Slipknot frontman, Rubin wasn't a frequent presence in the studio and offered little direction and advice on making the record. Even before the album came out, the band was a little gun-shy discussing Rubin's involvement in the album as they would tell MTV here. Hey, now you guys um, worked with Rick Rubin on this one, who's obviously he's worked with Slayer, Beastie Boys, a ton of amazing bands. How was it working with him? Did he actually show up? Yeah. Yeah. Once in a while. He was there. Yeah. He kicked it on the couch, stroked his beard, nodded, and then he was out, you know. <laughs> I, heard, I heard Kerry King saying, you know, that yeah, well, this, he doesn't show up. A lot of people have issues with the way he works, you know, which, you know, it's fine, whatever. But, I mean, he, it's it's the end result that really matters, and I think the album will speak for itself. So, so did he yeah. take you to, like, a new place and... He, we were we were thinking about going there anyway, but I mean he definitely encouraged us. You know, I mean on this album we really wanted to break out of sort of the wall, the the kind of closed in space we kind of painted for ourselves and really show everybody in the band show that there was there was more to this band than, than just what everybody had seen pri not previously. So cool. we really got to shine on this man. It's, there's a lot of good stuff on it. All right, so we will find out Tuesday. This Tuesday. While Rubin was listed as the producer for the album, Taylor would praise engineer Greg Fiddleman for really stepping up and helping produce the record, even though he's only credited as an engineer on the album. While Taylor would remain mostly quiet on the matter for a number of years, the tension between the frontman and producer wouldn't come back into the light until 2011 during a Q&A with fans in Austin, Texas, where he trashed Rick Rubin saying, there are some people who would love for me to toe the party line. Rick Rubin showed up for 45 minutes a week Rick Rubin would then during that 45 minutes lay on the couch and have a mic brought in next to his face so he wouldn't have to move. The Rick Rubin of today is a thin, thin shadow of the Rick Rubin that he was. He's overrated, he is overpaid, and I will never work with him again as long as I effing live, he would say. In a separate interview with Revolver Magazine, Taylor would reveal that he wasn't happy with how the vocals turned out on the album and that he only saw Rubin a total of four times during the making of the record. But it wouldn't just be Corey Taylor who commented on working with Rick Rubin from Slipknot. In 2008, guitarist Jim Root had more positive things to say about working with Rubin, telling Revolver Magazine, Rick was really attentive to what we needed as a band. A lot of people in the band say Rick was unavailable, and yeah, he takes on a lot of projects at one time, but he also does things that are beneficial. He would listen to what we'd done, then he would have us retract things that need to work. He's kind of like a big brother up on the hill. Even though he wasn't there physically every day, he was. That's my favorite record we've done, he'd say. Meanwhile, Clown would say in the same interview, Volume 3 is all about rebuilding friendships, and since we were rebuilding, it was really easy to rebuild the innovation of our music. Listen to that effing record, it's spiritual. Rick Rubin's the oracle, he would say. Five years later, though, Corey Taylor would strike a more positive tone, hoping to make amends with the producer telling Apple Music, he works his way and he always has. I was not used to working that way. I was a young guy freshly sober. Being a singer and being sober, I need your attention, Rick. I need it. So that was me being young, unsure of myself, needing guidance, which I got from Greg Fiddleman. Taylor would go on to say that he would hope to someday make amends with the producer, but three years later in 2019, Taylor was interviewed on the Dean Delray podcast, where the subject of Rick Rubin came up once again, with him saying, when it came time to work with Rick, he just wasn't effing there. It felt like, it's like, oh, I'm working with you two now, and I'm like, we're still in the studio, dude. Honestly, it wasn't until we finished the vocals at his house that I saw him more than once a week. In the same interview, Taylor would sing Fiddleman's praises, singling him out as the unsung hero of the album, and Fiddleman would go on to work with the band on their subsequent albums as a producer. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. We'll see you again, Rock and Roll True Story. Stick here.